डियर स्टूडेंट दिस इज शिल्पी सक्सेना वेलकम टू माई चैनल लर्निंग हब सो वी विल मूव अड विद फाइल हैंडलिंग इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कवरिंग पाथ दैट इज एब्सोल्यूट पाथ एंड रिलेटिव पाथ देन द फंक्शन फ्लैश एंड इन स्टैंडर्ड इनपुट आउटपुट एंड एर स्ट्रीम्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एब्सोल्यूट पाथ एंड रिलेटिव पाथ सो वॉट इज अ पाथ See, path is the suppose we are uh, we want to access a file. So exact location of the file is known as path. Suppose I have kept um, in my document. I have kept suppose uh, in D drive in my my folder, and then I have kept one file shilpi dot py. So the location of my file will be C drive or D drive, whatever it is, and then my folder and the file so exact location of the file is known as path so path we can write in two ways that is that is absolute path and relative path absolute path is the complete path of any file suppose i have drawn the picture of the folders you can see folder 1 folder 2 folder 3 folder 4 and folder 5 suppose and if these folders have different file a dot d dat c dot cpp b dot cpp c dot dat file py file these are the file you can see the alphabets i have used so that you can easily see which one is file and which one is folder so suppose you want to access this one this file so the look the i'm talking about absolute path so for absolute path the location of this file will be you have to go from the root that is d drive and then you can see this folder 1 and then c dot dat file so how you are going to write d drive that is backslash then folder 1 backslash and then c dot dat file this is the absolute path of this particular file suppose you want to access c dot py what will be the path first of all again we have to start from root so d drive after that you can see it is in folder 4 which is in folder 1 so you have to write folder 1 folder 4 c dot py in this way we write absolute path now we will um, i'll discuss what is relative path relative path is basically the location of the file relative to the current working directory current working directory means suppose we are working uh, suppose right now i am working in this folder so what will be the location of this file so the it gives the path according to the current working directory i take one example again suppose i want to access this file so i'm if i want to write relative path of this file and i am in this folder this is my current folder so how we can write backslash dot dot backslash c dot dat that means that means that this is the current directory i am in this current directory so this file is present in current directory only suppose i want i am in this folder i am in this folder now this is i am in this folder currently and i want to access this file i am in this folder and i want to access this file now this folder this file is in this folder that is folder 1 is the parent of folder 4 again pay attention folder 1 is the parent of folder 4 so this is not in current directory current directory is folder 4 this file is in the parent directory of the current directory so we can write backslash with double dot we can write b dot cpp it means whatever the current directory is in that whatever is the parent of this current directory in that parent there exists the file b.cpp now suppose we are on folder 2 now i want to access this file again 
So we are in folder 2. So how we can access this file? The path will be, see it is in this folder which in is in this folder and this one. This is the path. D drive, then folder 1, then folder 4. So it is in its parent. So double dot, it means we are in this current folder, parent of this folder and then comes folder 1 backslash folder 4 backslash c dot p1 in this way we can access a file using relative path so absolute path is the complete location of any particular file and relative path is the path relative to the current working folder now the flush function Flush function is a function which is used to transfer all the content which is in the buffer to the file. Suppose I have uh, given a command to write anything inside a file. So what will happen when we will close the file then uh, till that time that particular data is in the memory that is in buffer. So if we suppose by chance uh, some, some uh, error happens or some uh, disk error happens and then in that case data may be lost. So if we want our data to, uh, to be written in the file before we close the file so we use plus function. Suppose I have opened a file f is equal to open ss.txt in write mode. In this case, suppose I have written f.write python. So I want to write this in the file and then I have started some other work. Suppose I have, after that I have written f.write c++ or print So, till I am closing the file f.close, this all data will be in buffer. So, if we want to transfer this to the file before the file closes, we have to write f.flush. So, it will save data from getting corrupted. Now, we will move ahead with standard input, output and error streams. See, standard input output, you know very well when we want uh, user to give input. So, what is the standard input device? That is keyboard. And if we ask user, if we ask system to give the output, the standard output device is monitor. Similarly, standard output device and error stream is almost same. See, uh, when we want, when there is an error, the output device is monitor only on which the text is printed, the error message is printed and standard input device is keyboard. So how Python handles this standard input and output device? So these standard devices are implemented as files. These are input and output files and uh, the module which is used to handle these files are, is sys module. So when we are using sys module then only we can handle these devices explicitly. So I'll take one example now. So this is a simple example of all the streams. There are three streams that is standard input stream, standard output stream and standard error stream. So we'll start with standard output. First of all, we have to import sys module. That is a module which will handle all the three streams. So f is equal to open. We have opened a file in r plus mode. r plus mode means read as well as write. So uh, I have read one line from the file, read line and then I want to print it on the screen. Usually what command we used? Print x to print the value in x on the screen. Here we will be using sys.standardoutput that is stdout.write. Initially you have used write function to write anything in the screen, uh, sorry in the file. Whenever you want to write some data in the file, you used write function. But when we are using this with standard output, it will it will not write in the file. It will write on the standard output device that is monitor. So whatever value is there in X, that will be written on the monitor. That will be displayed on the monitor. 
If you want to write any error message rather than X, we can simply write it in inverted commas. That is whatever you want to display. So in this way, we can use it. Then comes these two functions. See, read function and read line function can be used to take initially read and read line functions we use to read from the file. Suppose we want to read from the keyboard, we can use this with standard input. The difference between two is this will obviously read one line as input from the user through the keyboard. But this will ask you to give multiple in multiple line as input. Now, please take care that when you want to exit from this read command, you have to press Ctrl plus D. Then only you will be able to exit from this read command. And when you want to exit from read line, you have to press Enter key. So, whatever is read that I have written in the file. Now, here you see... I have used file object means it will be written in the file. When we use sys.standardoutput.write, it will be written on the monitor. Now, next one is standard error.write. See, the difference between standard output and standard error only difference is that it is an error message, so it is displayed in red color. Both the thing, both the streams will write the message on the monitor, display the message on the monitor, but this will be displayed in red color. So you can see here as I have not closed the file, so I have displayed the message file not closed. So if you want to highlight any message, then only you can use, then you have to use standard error dot write. It will display this message on the monitor in red color. So now I will demonstrate all these stream on my laptop. So this is a program to demonstrate simple standard input output devices. It, uh, how Python use these devices as a stream. So uh, the, we, I have opened a file text.txt, text1.txt in write mode. So this ANS is equal to Y I am using for infinite loop. This program will simply take input from the user through standard device and write it in the file. So ANS is equal to Y for infinite loop. Now print enter text of multiple lines. X is equal to sys.stdin.read. It will read multiple lines uh, as input. And when we want to exit, as I already told you, press Ctrl D to exit. Now this whatever I am reading, I have to write it in the file. So X and new line character I am using to write in the file and then to enter single line I have taken input in Y. This I am not writing in the file. We are right. We are just I just want to display it on the monitor. So syst dot standard out dot write to write it on the screen. This then it is in finite loop and if you want to continue you can press Y Y otherwise any other character will will allow you to exit from the loop and finally when everything is complete it will display you have completed and then close the file so i'll run this program function f5 uh, suppose i'm writing python is very easy i press enter I'll write I love Python. Python. Now I want to exit. So control D. It will move to second line. So. Now next line. Whatever we want to enter. Learning. Up. Is. A platform. To learn Python. Now, see whatever I have written that is printed on the monitor using standard output st std out stream. And then finally, if you want to continue, press Y. I don't want to continue. So any other character will ask you to will allow you to leave. Now, finally, this is the error message which I have written. You can see it is in red color so 
in this way we can use standard input and output stream now next thing is i have told you about the um, absolute and relative part this if i want to locate uh, till now when we were writing full complete address that was the absolute the new thing is relative suppose i will show you this is my folder this is the text file which i was using python is very easy i love python now i am deleting this file i will delete this file i want file to be in the parent folder here you can see the parent folder now this is the parent folder there is no text one file now if i want i can use relative address also i can write like this you can see double slash as i already told you if we will use single slash slash t this much this thing will be considered as special character so it can generate an error so we will use double slash and this means in the parent folder it has to create the file function f5 multiple lines suppose i am writing python then c++ then i'll exit control d i'll exit single line suppose uh, sql i've written press enter and i don't want to continue this will exit from the program now i'll show you this is the parent directory and you can see the file is created these two things i wrote it and this is stored here so in this way we can use absolute path and relative path absolute path i always you are using initially in my previous video i have told you very clearly simply directly you can uh, just from the properties you can copy the location and paste it here and use it and in case of relative you can use dot operator so my dear students i hope you enjoyed the video if you like this video please like and subscribe hit the bell icon and don't forget to share thank you and have a nice day ahead